Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to our show. Hola y aloha. We are the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. My name is Barbara DeLuca, founder and president, along with my co-host, Marisol Ruiz. She's our vice president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in Hawaii. So it's January. I can still say Happy New Year, right? Yes. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yes. <laughs> the whole month. Um, what's left of it? Two more weeks. <laughs> my past. So. <laughs> Today's guest is um, Chris Calderon. She's our franchise owner of Signal Security Hawaii. She's a certified trainer of a curriculum called Refuse to Be a Victim. And she's also a Hispanic Chamber of Commerce um, business member. And she's taken on the task of uh, membership committees. So she, you'll be hearing from her soon, reaching out to you guys. Um, today's episode is community awareness. If you see something, say something. Welcome let's, to our show. Let's get into it. Welcome to our Hello. show, Chris. We're so excited to have you. Hola, Can't wait to everybody. meet you in person. How are yes. you? I am good. It's nice to be here. Thank you guys for having me today. Of course. So let's just dive right in. Tell us a little bit. Actually, tell us a lot about you. Okay. Uh, give us some background information and uh, we'll just kind of, you know, we'll we'll volley back and forth. But um, let's just start with who you are. We're really excited okay. to get to know you. Awesome. Okay. Well, again, well, um, thank you to everybody uh, for having me today. Um, so I'm Chris Calderon. Um, I was born and raised um, along the West Coast of the mainland, California, Washington State. Um, I grew up being um, in a not very safe environment as a child. So kind of safety and awareness and um, those kind of things have always just kind of been a thing that's been ingrained in me just because I grew up in an, an environment that wasn't super great. Um, so it kind of started there. Um, I was an athlete growing up. Um, I was a single mom. I was a teenage mom. I had my son when I was 16. Uh, when I graduated high school, he turned two um, just about two weeks later. Oh, good um, for and you. So, you finished high school. Yeah, yeah. That was not easy, but yeah, doable for sure. Yeah. Yep. And then um, I, uh, a little bit later, um, a few years later, I had my daughter uh, and I was engaged at the time. Uh, that ended up not happening, um, but I went into law enforcement um, where I kind of honed more skills and kind of was in the community. And um, while I was in law enforcement, um, I had a kid that I had arrested multiple times just for nothing super serious, but like fighting in public and those kind of things. Um, I had been on a very long shift and he followed me home after a shift and he set my house on fire uh, oh. where my kids and I were asleep inside. So again, I have to always safety is just something I have learned throughout my path of life. And so um, I actually got married in my early 20s. Also, I got, I got out of law enforcement about six months or so after that. Um, and um, I was married. And then, of course, because it's just the way my path was going is I married somebody who was very violent. So I ended up in a domestic violence situation. So got out of that. So again, learning how to protect myself, be safe, figure things out. Um, and then I, as my kids grew, um, both my kids went through high school and graduated with honors. I ended up graduating college with honors. And then my kids both graduated college with honors. And um, so it's just been a, a struggle. We have fought through a whole lot of things, but um, God has been faithful and um, he has never given me something that I haven't been able to figure out. And he has, hasn't been willing to help me through. So uh, I came uh, into security by way of uh, other male dominant industries where i intentionally put myself in places where I'm uncomfortable. If I'm the only person that looks like me, either being a female or being Latina, um, I always want to have that one voice at the table that's different from everybody else's. So I've worked highway construction, um, housing construction, right-of-way work, real estate houses where it was all men. Um, and so the next natural gravitation was into uh, security, where again, it's a male dominant industry and I'm the only person that looks like me, um, but I use that to my advantage. And so um, it is something that I'm very passionate about, keeping people safe and just helping people understand how much control they really have over their own personal space. Um, and so I went into security and I just moved back to Hawaii um, at the end of August of last year. Um, and now I've launched my franchise with Signal and I am getting ready to teach classes for situational awareness. And I just want to be part of the community and help people understand how much power they actually have and help them kind of regain that. and kind of own their space that i'm so excited i have like a bunch of notes i want to let me let me take it back uh you yeah. know one of the first things that you said um and it, you did say you're an open book and i feel that 
you, whatever you've gone through in your life, you've, uh, you're open, right. To discuss yes. because you don't know who can relate to you or who might need to hear a message that, that, that you have. So one of the things that you said right at the beginning was you grew up in a not so good environment. Was that like actually in your home or was that like neighborhood? Can you, you um, yeah, share so I'll, be, about that? I'll be completely transparent and it might be triggering for some people, but I, I will share it. Um, I actually grew up my very first, um, memory of my life is being sexually molested. And so I grew up not being protected from that. And there was two people in my family who it went on for years and years and years. So I never, growing up, I never felt safe. Um, and then that kind of ended, but I also was under, I had a very abusive mother. And mm -hmm. so with her, I also never felt safe. So yeah. once I finally started getting into my own, like, you know, my teenage years, and then I at an early age had my son. So I had to learn not only was I learning how to protect myself, but now I had this new baby and I'm still a kid, right? Having right. to learn how to keep myself safe and protected. Um, but also now I'm responsible for another life. So that, you know, that mama bear instinct, it just yeah. kicked it up. I don't know how many notches. And I have just kind of been at that higher level um, since I was a kid because I, I just didn't feel like there was any other way to operate. And what do you think? I mean, I think this is super fascinating. I mean, we could probably spend hours on just a topic like this alone, and then we'll get into more. But what do you think it was? Because you've accomplished so much, right? You, you've been in law enforcement, an entrepreneur, a mother, you know, college honors. I mean, you've defied the the odds, right? And it's like the expectation, I don't even want to say expectation, but, you know, most people that endure those kinds of things, it's like, oh, you you made it out alive, so to speak, right? So what do you think, how did you not what contributes to you not uh, having repeated the cycle, right? Because we see that in our communities where we're a part of something and we don't know any better. I mean, if you're born yeah. into uh, domestic violence, sexual abuse, like it, that's what it is. You don't know any different. You knew you weren't safe, but how did you not repeat the cycle? How did you, what, what, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that because I think I, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I think we don't really press into our mindset enough, right? Like I was determined. So growing up, um, I had my, my mom came from, um, a, she was one of 13 children. So tios, tias, all my cousins, I had a ginormous family. Um, and I grew up with women who were always telling me like, you're pretty. So you get married and you have your babies and that's you and you'll be happy. And that was all I was ever fed. I was never told, get educated, have a career, start a business. You know, it was never anything that was empowering. It was always just me being um, submissive to a man who I would then take care of. So I grew up not believing in, I never wanted to have kids and I never wanted to get married because that's all I was told I could have. So I wanted everything else that they never talked about. And I would see career women in my neighborhood or, you know, even my, my female teachers, like they had their own car and they lived however they lived you know what I mean and I and that's so why I would see these images of females in my community but then I go home and like learn how to cook and clean and it was just never enough for me because I kept seeing that there was other options and so even growing up even how I grew up I just had the mindset of that's not enough for me I don't want to have just a husband and just kids not that there's anything wrong with that but I don't feel like that's what God created me for and so I didn't want to have that. And so I, I just kept pressing on, like, no matter what happens, there's more for me to do for myself. But I also at a young age had my son. So what kind of example am I, if I'm sitting on the couch and crying about it or not making things happen? And, you know, and now he own he is 32 and he owns his own business and he just had a custom home built and he graduated wow. from college That's with honors. Awesome. That I got chicken skin because that does <laughs> right? That doesn't right. happen, but God has been faithful and he's kept us on a certain track and he's kept us protected in a lot of ways. And so, um, I just think it's mindset. And I think a lot of things in life are a mind game. I can be victim to whatever happens, or I can be like, okay, right. this happened. I'm going to learn and take everything I can from it. And now I'm going to put that in my arsenal because the next thing that comes now I have all these other things I can choose from and draw the strength and the lessons from it. And then I, I just, I talk about that all the time. Everything I go through, I'm going to keep building my arsenal. At some point, I'm going to come against something where I've either done it already or it's going to help strengthen my arsenal. But either, it, it all comes down to mindset. 
It is That's a great way to put it, right? It's almost like you're you're in preparation for whatever may come. Like I've never heard it expressed that way. That's that's really I like that. Yeah, I, I just feel like you got to fight every day, right? Like you can choose to be happy. You can fight for your happiness. You can protect your surroundings, and you can protect, you know, who you surround yourself by, and that and all of that is just choices. Right. Exactly. Um, you're not a victim. You're a victor. Correct. And Amen. Your <laughs> is your testimony. And yes. you're using everything in your arsenal, you know, to, to help others that have been in your situation. And yes, it's a beautiful thing. Tell us about the Signal Security Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so Signal Security is a franchise. It's a global company. Um, so it's um, in six states. And I think there's 200 something franchises across the U.S. So in the U.S., um, every, every one of the franchises is locally owned. So like for Hawaii, you are not going to see another Signal of Hawaii because I have the whole state as my territory. And so each one of the owners is um, personally invested in their community. You know, like there's there's big security companies that are much bigger than ours, except that they're also, because they're big, they're removed. So they're not committed to specific areas, right? So for me, I am 100% committed to Hawaii only. My, my support system and my payroll team and all those things they're all uh, on the mainland, but my focus is 100% in Hawaii and nothing else. So I care about the community here, about serving the community here, about building, about partnering. Um, and my sole focus is just here on the islands. And what kind of services do you provide for businesses? Um, so uh, we do we work with businesses and with HOAs, COAs. So we um, do two different models really that we provide. Um, one of them is a patrol model where you know, we have a very visible um, car, a patrol car that we patrol in and out of different areas. And then we also have dedicated services where if it's like a concierge at a hospital, say, um, and they need somebody who is going to be that eyes and ears at the entrance, then we have somebody who can be placed there for, you know, X amount of hours a day. And then we also do events. So if there's a parade or um, I just recently did an event um, not that long ago for Make-A-Wish Hawaii, um, and where I provided overnight security to make sure that the event the next morning that was launching, all the equipment was still there. Things weren't stolen. Stuff wasn't messed up and that kind of thing. So um, so those are the three things that we really kind of get into. Right. So your your company, um, you just you just started the franchise. And I understand you're um, looking to staff one or two positions or what are you, what are you looking for? Yes, uh, I have two full-time clients uh, so far and they are keeping me busy. Um, so I'm kind of right in that sweet spot where I just need one more contract, which I'm working on. And then I will have some a full-time position for somebody and then potentially a part-time um, position. And so I am looking for people who um, have had security backgrounds and who kind of know, but also um, I'm looking for those people who are looking for a chance, who maybe don't have a career path or you know can't afford to go to college and they don't see another way to grow, a, you know, an income or to provide for their family or to have a career. And I really, there's so much opportunity specifically um, in this company. And so I want people who are hungry to grow and who are going to show up for themselves, but also for the rest of their team, because I will invest everything that I can if I know that I have that commitment from that person and I'm willing to mentor and however I can help build that person, because then they can turn around and do that for somebody else. And that's, I feel like that's how our community changes. That and is. that's refreshing to hear as well, because there's so many people that, I mean, even myself personally, like if I wasn't doing what I was doing, I don't even know what else I would do, right? Like in a career path or somebody that might not even have a career path. That's that's refreshing to know that there's a space and there's a place and there's, you know, a possibility of of a mentor that can, you know, take you in a, in a direction that you, and, and show you opportunities that might, you might not have ever known. Uh, I, yes. I know nothing about the security, the security world, right? But yeah. you're saying there's a lot of opportunity in there. Tons. Well, if you think about it, it's one of those things where it's we're all about safety and awareness, and that's right. never going to change. The world we get with that we're in now, it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. So the need is even more so. And so I really encourage even, um, especially women, because I think we bring a different element. Not that there's anything wrong with what the elements that men bring, but I feel like women don't tap into all that we were created to be. I feel like we kind of stay in the safe lanes where this is, you know, how I mentioned before, how I go into male dominant industries on purpose, because the conversation has to change. We, we have to be able to fit in wherever we need to fit in. 
And so I think that if there's women out there who are maybe like you, we talked about, maybe don't have a career path or like, I don't have a guard card, but maybe that's something I call me. Let's have that conversation. I'm willing to go to bat for somebody who's willing, who's hungry and wants an opportunity. Definitely. And the, and the fact that you're a Latina owned business and a, a woman owned business um, and you, you have the element of surprise because people don't expect it from you. And I like yes. that you put yourself in those situations on purpose. And, and so you can grow. That's the only place we grow is when we're uncomfortable. Exactly right. I walk into meetings a lot of times where I've just communicated via email with people. And because I go by Chris, not Christina, I walk in and they're like, oh, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Chris. And they're like, what? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm here. I'm here for this meeting. You're going to hear me. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sound like a little, little troublemaker in a good way. Like, you a, like little to... <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, like I was it. trying to rub elbows like, hey, look, make some space because I'm, I'm coming. But my hope is always that there's a group coming behind me. I'm always trying to pave a way like, you know, because I didn't have that as a kid. That's important to me. I only had my tias who... They were all content being wives and moms and right. that, there's nothing wrong with that. But I just knew that wasn't for me. And mm -hmm. so my hope is that I'm giving somebody else some kind of inspiration or an example to go, you know what, I can do that too. And so if I can help open a door and bring somebody else alongside me and say, hey, let's start here and you, you can go anywhere you want, then my life has purpose if I'm helping somebody else find their purpose. Right. And you were, you were saying too, as far as like, you know, you, you want to be really involved in, in, in the community, as far as your line of work and your business and what would that look like? Like, have you done that before in other, you know, maybe in Nebraska or anywhere else or in the mainland? Um, what would that look like? What would you, what do you want it to be? Right. Like, what do you envision for that? Because we're um, here to support you and, and, and make all those things happen. So we're excited. You mean in terms of like my involvement or mm -hmm. what exactly do you mean? Yeah. Or like training. I think you were saying earlier, right? Like to, I don't know if it's education or, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking security. I'm like, oh, is maybe, is it a self-defense class? Is it a, oh, uh, I understand. you know, anything like that? Okay. So I also actually, I have a, another side hustle that I do. Um, I actually teach a curriculum called refuse to be a victim. Okay. And it really. And it's mostly really, um, I've mostly taught women and it, I think it was designed that way. Um, but after so many years, I think men kind of got involved because it's valuable information. I actually teach a curriculum that's called Refuse to Be a Victim. And it really talks about situational awareness and help and helping people understand how much power they have really in their own environment and how to keep themselves safe. So things to watch out for, things to avoid, um, you know, where to park in a parking lot, how to protect your home. Um, you know, a lot of it is instinct. If you have a gut feeling, you know, you, if you get in an elevator, and there's only one or two other people and you feel something, get off the elevator, trust yourself, right? But I think people in the day and age we live in are so afraid to offend someone else. Like, I don't, I don't want to hurt their feelings by getting off. You know what? Your hurt feelings are okay with me if I'm going home tonight and I can see my family again. Your hurt feelings are going to have to be bypassed. So I, I always try to make people understand, like, you really have so many choices in your day, in every, in your everyday life. And it really is going to dictate whether you keep yourself safe or not. And it's literally just paying attention. And it's those things that people don't think about because, right, we're busy. We're going from the work to the grocery store. Then we have to go home and make dinner. Or we're dropping kids off for sports. Or we got to be at church or whatever. And so you get in your mindset of the routine, but it only takes somebody else a, a day or two to pay attention to what you're doing. And now they know your routine. And oh if you're not paying attention, they are. And I, we get so busy that we don't think about those things. And so, I always want to be that voice like, hey, take a different route home tomorrow. Or you go on a walk every day at 6 a.m. Tomorrow, take a different route. Or on Tuesdays, go somewhere different or something like that because your pattern, you have to break up your patterns because you don't ever know really who's watching you. You know, uh, it, and it's not only, um, I mean, that's really interesting. It's not only that we're so busy, uh, would you say we're really distracted? Very much. Um, it's I mean, I actually... <laughs> I just had, yes, we've had that conversation. Um, I will not be on my phone in public. It doesn't matter if I'm in a shopping center, if I'm in the mall, where it like doesn't matter. I will not be on my phone in public because if I'm paying attention and I'm listening for what's happening on the phone, now I'm not paying attention to the people who might be watching me or the person who's 10 steps behind me. I'm not hearing the footsteps because I'm listening to what's on my phone. So I, everybody knows if I, if I'm running errands, 
if I'm in my car, you know, it connects to my car and I and I'm locked in the car and I'm safe that way. And I can listen and, you know, talk while I'm driving. But if I don't care if I'm at an ATM or the grocery store or wherever, I will not be on my phone until I'm back in my car or back home where I'm in control of my surroundings. You know, reflecting back on that person that lit your house on fire, I bet that was a huge learning experience for you and, and probably what drives your passion to teach situation awareness. Yes, very much so. Yeah. How, so, long, have, how long were you in law enforcement, Chris? Um, I was only years. about two years um, yeah. and I, I was in that situation where I was the only female on my squad. So anytime that we went to any sort of call, I was always the target because I was the smallest one and I was the only female. Right. Uh, but, but I got to do a lot of, I mean, for me, it's fun things, but I got to do like undercover drug buys and I sat through autopsies and all those kind of crazy things that nobody wow. really likes to do. But I love to learn and, and push myself so that you know, if I go into a situation where I'm uncomfortable, I'll figure out a way to get comfortable. And then I got to find the next situation to make me uncomfortable because then I continue to, to level up and just continue to grow. Leveling up. You have such a seeking spirit. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so Chris joined the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce with her business and um, has volunteered to reach out to our members and, and, and join the membership committee. Not just join it, but head it. So. Yes. Yeah, we're meeting in a couple of weeks. So I look forward to that and seeing how, you know, we can reach out to the community. Like, like you said, you want to give back and, and put yourself in a situation where you're continuing to level up. So we're all going to level up together. <laughs> yes, I look forward to it. <laughs> so your, oh, sorry, um, your curriculum, when do you um, teach it or how, were you going to ask that? <laughs> how do you spell? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Tell us more about that. <laughs> Okay, so I just, um, I have not done any classes yet this year, still early in the year, but I'm looking to do, I'm, I'm thinking probably the first or second Saturday of every month, and, and it's an in-person class. So I'm probably going to start them in Mililani, um, just because it's, you know, here. Um, and I'm just looking for women who want to, cut, you know, it, it's a whole curriculum. There's a slideshow. We have, you know, Q&A, open discussions about things that actually happen in the world. Um, you get a booklet that you can take notes and then refer back to, you know, there's, we talk about things that how to um, fortify your home, you know, changing little things here and there and how to keep it more safe and things not to do. And so I really um, people that are hungry. And I think honestly, I think everybody should be hungry for that knowledge. Everybody lives in the same world that I see on the news every single day. And, you know, I see stuff on social media and we all live in that same world. So I can't imagine that there's anybody out there who doesn't want to protect themselves or protect their home or their family. And it's not you know, a come out guns blazing and you have this huge arsenal of crazy equipment. It's literally just paying attention, taking small steps to protect your space uh, and then just being aware, you know, especially for parents, like you have another level of protection you have to provide for your children. And if you're not even protecting yourself and in that mindset, who's looking out for your kids? And so I, I really just feel like everybody should take these, steps. not because it benefits me in any way, but our community starts to change when people stop being victims. Right. And, right. Like I, my life changed because I didn't want to be a victim of all the right. things that have happened. I could have sat and been like, okay, this is where I'm at, but okay. So what am I going to learn from it? And how is it going to strengthen me? And let's go then, because now I have this other thing in my arsenal. And now the next thing that comes, I can pull from the knowledge I've already earned. And we never think, right. I mean, we're like, oh, we're in Hawaii and it's safe and aloha and all this. And you don't think it's going to happen to you until it like happens to you or Correct. somebody close. And then you're like, what just happened? Like, right, uh, Barbara, when over Christmas, the the young uh, mother uh, that was shot and killed by her husband. I mean, right. you don't think about these things right before Christmas and uh, people closest to you. Right. And you're not you're not prepared. You don't think right. it's going to happen to you until it does. Right. Here in Milani, in the parking lot. Remember, Chris? At were you here yet? At uh, Walmart, she was just pushing her baby stroller in the parking lot, and somebody attacked her with a fire iron. Right. Like, situational awareness. Could she have seen him coming? I don't. I don't know. Right. Oh my God. Exactly. But it's all choices, right? Like, it's where you park. It's do you go to the store in the morning or do you go in the evening? And do you park under lights or do you park next to a big? van that doesn't have any windows where the sliding door is right next to your door like those are the things I look at like it's easy to to start noticing those things once you get in the mindset of 
you have to own your own safety. Like we have security guards and we have police, but that's reactionary. So right. the first person that can protect you is you. So why wouldn't you want to own that and keep yourself safe? Especially, I always think, especially if you have kids. Yeah, that that's kind of like the um, doctors. You go to the doctors, but you have to ask more questions and get a second opinion. You have to advocate for yourself. They're Correct. there as a resource, but same thing with the police. They're not going to, you know, it's it's too late to protect you after the assault has happened. Right, um, exactly. They're just basically taking a report, right? And um, police, when you think about how many people they have to service, they can't be there for all of us. But each one of us can be there for ourselves and for our family and for our immediate, you know, our apartment complex or our office building or, you know, people that are in line at the ATM with us. Like, if it only takes one person to pay attention and then it, it changes the entire situation for everybody that's involved. And isn't it true, right? Like the gut, like you always know, right? If you go back and you're like, oh, I had this, even if it's just a little tiny, little, I don't know, a little thing in your yes. head or in your tummy. And then you look back and you're like, I knew, but we don't yeah. have, yeah, we don't have, I don't know what it is that we don't always pay attention. Yeah. I think we, um, we come into, uh, kind, yeah, we don't trust ourselves. We're like, maybe we're overly sensitive. You know what? Right. I don't be overly sensitive and safe then ignore it. And now I'm regretting ignoring it. Right. right like, right. it's like, um, I talk to people about, you know, when you take a walk, if you're taking a walk and you see a, one or two people coming at you and you're like, it's just a little bit sketchy, cross the street, yes. go into a store, pretend like you're going to get your hair, whatever's the closest place, go into that. If it's, if you're in a neighborhood and there's nowhere else to go cross the street, go the opposite direction, figure out a different way to reroute that, but pay attention because if you're walking towards somebody and you didn't take that second to remove yourself, now you put yourself in a situation and you did it voluntarily. Right. Right? right. And so I'm always, and I know that it's offensive maybe to some people, like, why would you think that of me? I was just walking. You know what? I, I can't put your personal feelings in front of my personal safety. That has to come first. Right. And so I'm, I'm not a person that's going to go out and hurt people's feelings intentionally. But if that's the, if, if your hurt feelings is the worst thing that happens, I can live with that. I this love that. Story, That's right. <laughs> Maybe we uh, can let's let's discuss bringing Chris to one of our um, Buenos Dias breakfast. I know. I was thinking yeah. about <laughs> that. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your time. I mean, we could we could go on and on and on. We don't have uh, much time in that, but we'll uh, do another part definitely at our Buenos Dias breakfast. Thank you so much for thank sharing you. your knowledge and your time with us. And how do we reach you, Chris? What's the best way? Um, you can reach me at, uh, my email is at chrisc at teamsignal.com. And my number is 808-399-6593. My phone's never off. I'm working 24-7. So you can call or text me anytime. I love it. She's a hustler. Woman with a purpose on a mission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is uh, Ola y Aloha on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for the platform. And we've been talking today with Chris Calderon. She's the franchise owner of Signal Security Hawaii. She just told you how to reach her. And uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. I'm Barbara DeLuca. My co-host is Marisol Ruiz, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You guys, thank you for joining us. Hola. I mean, adios y aloha. <laughs> <laughs> adios. <laughs>